I'm Toe Mouse, and in two years, I got my handicap down from a 28 to a 9. Here's how I did it, and here's how you can too. last two years since I've been taking golf a bit more seriously it's been a bit now I've done a lot of practicing a lot of different things that I've tried out this video I'm, I'm making just because I'm sure there's a lot of you guys that are trying it too and are on the grind and we can share a lot of the tips and tricks that we've used to help us first thing is kind of a mental side of things and it's actually playing net if you've got a high handicap and you're around 28 something that really helped me was being able to say right well i've made a double bogey on that hole and that hole and that hole and instead of getting really angry about it and frustrated realizing that actually with my handicap i've made three net parts not three double bogeys it's all part of the process and you know, making a double is really not bad on stroke index one where I've got two shots to play with. And being able to be okay with that and not letting that sort of really frustrate me going on to the rest of the round has re you know, really helped me to sort of keep my calm because as I'm sure a lot of you know, as you sort of lower your handicap, a lot of golf comes down to your mental side of things and being able to stay calm and feel good and confident over shots that you might not always if you were frustrated and angry from, from the last hole. When you make a double, let it go and play your net scores. So you're making, you know, if you're 28 handicap you've got literally two shots on every hole so take that and use that so yeah it's kind of a mental shift and an attitude change towards your golf stop playing gross for a little while The second thing I did, guys, which I learned pretty quickly was going to be important, was to have lessons. Get in touch with a PGA professional or whoever it is, your head pro at your club or wherever you can get a lesson from. Fundamentals of your golf swing is massive. Once you get those locked in, your handicap will fall quickly. You've just got to practice that and work it in. But in my case, um, after a month or two of playing, I got a lesson or two, got a few lessons, and it really set me on my way. I'll go away, know what to practice, come back in maybe a month, uh, and you know, know that I've improved in a certain way over time and, and now I'm ready to learn the next thing and the next thing and, and keep it going because that improvement is only going to stagger if you're sort of going to the driving range but drilling in things that are not necessarily the right things to be drilling in and you're sort of, I don't know, making it up as you're going along thinking it's right when you don't know. So getting your swing sort of analysed by a PGA professional every now and again is, is a massive thing to have someone who knows what they're talking about pushing you in the right direction so that you're always um, on the right track and you're always looking for the next thing one thing I'd actually say about this, which is, again, quite an important thing, is don't self-diagnose. Go on YouTube and there's, you know, how to fix my slice, how to do this, how to do that. That can be difficult uh, because people are slicing it for different reasons. People are hitting certain shots for different reasons. And if you self-diagnose, oh, I'm coming over the top, when it's not necessarily that, you're just leaving the club face open, you put yourself in a bit of trouble because you're sort of fixing the wrong thing. Something that massively helped me was keeping track of your stats. You know, download an app like I used 18 birdies for a long time. It gives you the ability to see how many greens you hit uh, in regulation, see how many fairways you hit, um, and all of those sort of things as well. So you can look back at the end of your round and, you know, oh well, after a few rounds, you can probably see a trend. In my case, it was I wasn't hitting enough greens and I was forcing myself to have to get up and down quite a lot. So yeah, so what I, what I did then was work a little bit more on my irons and my approach play. And over time, I would see those those stats go up. And you know what? It's, it's a 1% every day. That's what we sort of say. Sometimes you come back and it'll be worse, but that's just that day. The next will be better and better. And then over a few months, you'll find yourself looking back at the stats Ago. they have actually increased so your practice uh, was all worth it also guys it's a bit of a uh, it's a bit of an ego boost to be fair because you'll look back after a, a year or so and you go wow i am so much better than i was so that is a good one keep that in mind So you're getting better at golf at this point, you're about a year or so in and you struck, you sort of hit a plateau and you don't know why. Scoring comes down to short game. You get to a point where everyone can sort of get it in and around the green in a couple of shots, but then it's about your putting and your chipping. Are you practicing your chipping and putting? It can be so boring, I know, everyone knows it, but you have to practice your chipping and your putting because the tour, the tour stats from hitting greens aren't that great, but guess what? They get up and down time and time again. So guys, practice your chipping. This this helped me so much. I'm not a great golfer right at this point. Like I said, I'm still like a, a nine or eight handicapper. And you know, the low scores I've shot like this in the 70s have been 
honestly not that many greens here for just getting up and down constantly. If you're hitting the greens, fine. You need to practice your putting, that's absolutely fine. But make sure you're practicing your chipping, guys, because it's a huge thing. And for me personally, my short game has possibly been the thing that has saved me time and time again. 15, 20 minutes of chipping and putting, and then come back and do that time and time again. It's these little incremental changes that you make over time that makes you the better golfer. So my final thing that I would say, guys, is practice with intention. Know what you've got to practice on this day at the driving range. Know what your coach has been telling you and go and do it. Don't just go there and smash 100 balls with driver like everyone else does. Well, guess what? You will get better because practice makes permanent, not perfect, right? Permanent, okay. So yeah, go and practice what you want, what you know you need to improve. Find drills relevant to that or that your coach has told you to do. Do them. I know that... You know, at the beginning, I was coming over the top, so I practiced drills that were helping me come from the inside. I then early it was early extending, and so I was finding drills to practice that. And you're constantly practicing something new, but over time, you don't realise your ball striking is getting better. Um, your, you know, your aiming is actually getting better, and your lines and things, and you're starting to be able to shape the ball. And as you keep coming down, you will make these tiny little incremental changes that will massively help your game overall. Leave a comment down down below, letting me know what your best tip is as to you know how you got your handicap down to wherever you're at now and what you're working on at the moment that is it for today's video guys i hope you have enjoyed it do subscribe if you are new we're still trying to grow the channel we'll be back with another video in a couple of days on the tone mouse golf channel i'll catch you in the next one